Here's the kill video for Mythic Unat. Um, finally ended out this this short tier, but still, man, you know those are kind of tough bosses, Cabal and Unat. Um, I wasn't on the kill for Cabal. I was in for the kill on Unat. Uh, not the best hunter. You know, not the best hunter fights. Uh, we're not. We can't multi dot shit, and we can't do lots of damage in different areas. It's all like you know, physical, like sort of centralized damage. So that's one of the main reasons why you know, hunter wasn't too great in this uh, crucible of storms. It's a little half raid. Uh, I just wanted to show really quick this little clip of I was using a sliver, so the incandescent sliver, which is the intellect, uh, you know, DPS trinket from what is it, opulence. Um, I was using this trinket because all of the other casters and the ranged healers, they are using the trinket as well. And there is a lot of stacking in this, um, uh, on this boss. So in this encounter, um, and anytime I'm stacked with my other, you know, ranged casters, the warlocks and the elemental shamans mostly, um, then I don't want to be leeching their stacks from the sliver. I don't want to be, you know, just taking their stacks. So... It is a, you know, a little bit of a DPS loss, obviously. I mean, uh, just losing some agility baseline, and then maybe it's, I mean, it's a pretty decent passive. I mean, it, you know, it's 230 crit and then 75 mastery. I mean, crit isn't that great. Uh, as you can see, mine rolled with a socket, so, I mean, that's pretty good. Um, so, you know, I just wanted to kind of show that. It's a little weird, but, you know, it's, it's very uh, intended. It's very intentional to be using that trinket. Um, and obviously, it was only for Unot that I was using this. Uh, I was on Cabal. I was using my own, you know, agility trinkets because you can kind of spread on Cabal. You don't really have to stand on top of each other too much. Um, but And then, obviously, I'm still using my Gale Caller's Boon for the other one. Um, but let's get to the actual fights. So... I actually, uh, a few things I need to say here, this is not the actual kill video, um, this is one of the videos where I think we wiped it like 15% on this one, I, when we killed the boss, I was actually really, really pissed because I was not recording, um, and I noticed like when we were at like 5% and I was like, oh shit, this is a kill, I noticed that I was not recording and all of a sudden I just got really like, oh, I was... I was excited that we killed the boss on Mythic Unot, you know, but I was like, oh, I wish I had recorded it. So instead here, I'm just going to be showing another one of our attempts. I think it might have been the same night. I think it was the same night that we killed it. So everything should be basically the same. Um, but, you know, a couple of things here. We're using a lot of elemental shamans. There's a lot of adds that spawn during the fight um, that you can just multi-dot. You don't really need to be killing them, like, specifically. You don't need to really focus down the adds. So doing stuff like multi-shotting to just do lots of AoE damage, that actually is not really relevant in this fight. So um, another thing, my damage meter here, the damage meter you're going to be seeing is Unot damage. So that's just boss damage uh, because that's the only damage I'm doing, the only damage I'm worried about, and I want to see where everyone else is. Um, but on the actual damage done, I'm like almost last because I do literally zero AoE. I was very sort of intentionally doing no AoE. I think I might have one auto shot uh, on an ad during the phase, and then in the intermission phase, when the boss is untargetable, he takes 99% less damage. Uh, I do some ad damage there just because there's nothing else to do, and I just use it to reset my you know, true shot cooldown, get my focus regen and shit like that. Um, so that's the only time you'll see me hitting ads, but really that's irrelevant damage because they're just getting focused anyway, and they, they're going to die. Um, so my damage isn't so important there, but you know, it helps just during the intermissions. Um, but at the beginning of the fight here, we're kind of spread because as you'll see, there's a couple of really obvious and telegraphed mechanics that happen. Um, so we're going to do our regular opener here. Uh, I was using an old pot for the opener because we didn't, I don't know, I didn't really need to use a new one. Um, I don't want to have to spend too much gold on getting a bunch of new po potions. So this is the big thing. So first of all, just like on Cabal, um, and this is also true for Heroic, I think maybe normal as well, right? Uh, the Void Zones that spawn, they spawn, uh, they do a shitload of damage. Um, the, the damage is not shared. So if you have two people standing in one Void Zone, they both take full damage. They don't share the damage between each other. So you only need one person soaking a Void Zone. Um, so those are the void zones. Those are pretty obvious. We've seen those before. 
they go off first and then they go to a so the big one first and then the you know this the medium sized one and then the little ones that the are the last uh, hit so you just kind of soak those in order to make them stop uh you know blowing up um so you'll just notice people they will purposely stand in the void zones throughout the fight in order to soak it and then stop it from you know sort of reproducing and still you know bouncing around and blowing up um but you can see I'm in my zone here, my Gale Caller, so I want to stay in my Gale Caller zone. So the bait, you saw the countdown for the bait, that is this red pool on the ground. Uh, this is also in Heroic, I think normal as well. Uh, if you walk into that puddle, it will heal the boss. I think it's 5%. Um, and that really, you know, it's basically a wipe because you really need every bit of damage uh, on this fight. So the whole... The whole fight is all about these puddles and kind of making sure you're maximizing your room around the uh, your space around the room so that you have enough space to move and to stack and stuff. Now this is the big mythic, um, the big mythic uh, mechanic that is obviously different in mythic. There are three colors, so these are the resonance colors, the unstable resonance. So basically, it, it targets ranged players. They actually nerfed it. This is one of the nerfs about maybe a month ago now. I forget, three or four weeks ago. Um, it only targets ranged players, and then if there are not enough ranged players, it'll start targeting melee. So that is why you only bring, I guess, four melee. We have four melee, three rogues and one demon hunter. The debuff, obviously, is why we bring demon hunter. Um, so we have enough range in our comp, which obviously I think all groups probably do, because it, it would be silly to have to have a melee do this as well, because it's just, you know, hectic and weird. Um, but these marks, what you do, you have to line up your colors, and then the three people that have the relics that correspond to the colors, they have to go around and clear people's debuff, sort of. So you can see over here, my debuff, uh, I have 12 seconds. So I have Ocean. Now you can see Ocean on tank. So the tank is the one with the trident. That's the tanking bubble. Um, you know, you're probably familiar with that from Heroic and Normal. Uh, that's just the tank carries that around and then he uses that once in a while, um, you know, for whatever uh, mechanic in the fight. But the way the resonance works is he runs around, he picks up all of the, um, you know, Ocean people. And then the Void Stone goes around and picks up all the Void Stone people. And then finally, the Storm person runs around and picks up all the Storm people. Seems pretty simple, right? Well, if you're a Void and a, and a Storm and you just barely run into each other, you blow up and you die instantly and you kill everyone within a 10-yard radius. Uh, and it's basically a wipe if anyone hits anyone else. So you sort of have these traffic rules where it's like, okay, the traffic rule is Moon goes first and then void and then storm so storm yields to everyone and then void only yields to ocean and then ocean just has free movement so basically right when we're getting these marks you can you'll see us kind of freeze for a moment and be like okay he's got moon he's got storm so storm's going to stay completely still and then moon is going to move and then i'm going to move a storm or do whatever um and i mean you know that's that's a pretty fun little uh, mechanic, but it, it gets pretty, um, you know, easy and simple after you've done it a lot of times. You just kind of naturally realize where you have to move pretty quickly. So the other thing, obviously, the beams, these are also in the other um, uh, difficulties. You just have to not get two stacks. Uh, here I double tap, so I do get a double tapped aim shot uh, in careful aim. And my boy DB here, he does not have the say weak aura enabled. Uh, that says that says your color. So I, I just assumed he was void, and he walked on to me. Um, so we're baiting and more and more. So just like the other difficulties, the room shrinks. The room slowly shrinks. There's also this fear. That's also in the other difficulties. You just got to get out of that fear. I mean, yeah, it's pretty simple, right? It looks pretty easy, but it's it's a pretty you know it's a pretty hard fight just in terms of you know knowing the uh, the dance and the the sort of movement and it's the same every time but you know you got to make sure you don't fuck it up because if you fuck up a little bit then it will screw it up for everyone like the positioning uh so i get lucky here i get moon again so moon really is the easiest because you're allowed to move in front of everyone else everyone else has to stop and let moon move um 
and then void runs and then storm runs so basically if you have storm you just stand still and you basically wait for the storm person to come to you and usually it's a fire mage that's how a lot of groups have done it uh, the fire mage is able to move you know they can scorch uh, so they can do damage while moving and they can just blink you know through people so they're not blowing blowing up uh, different you know uh, different colors uh, they can just blink through it instead so here this is where i was talking about add damage so this is the only time really you add damage the boss is over there you know sucking sucking the life force out of nazoth or whatever the fuck he's doing um so here is when you use the storm relic to blast the ads because remember these ads they don't actually die when they get to zero percent they just heal back to full and so the storm relic is what kills anything that is under 25 percent, including players of course so when you're using that uh, you got to make sure players are not uh, below 25% or, well, at 25 I mean, 28% too, I think, because it'll hit you at 28 and then it'll kill you because you're under, like, 25 um, And then the next thing is you use the Void Stone. You activate the Void Stone, and that means nobody takes any healing, but that also allows you to clear the uh, red puddles on the ground so that you can kind of reset the arena and have more room like a new area to uh, to place more red puddles otherwise you would just have a shitload of red puddles and you wouldn't have any room left you know when the boss was at like 50 percent or something you wouldn't have any room left without that so again this is the bait you gotta love my big bait uh week aura here so you bait it away from the middle because you want to have the middle open and free so people can move through and get their interrupts and do you know, and clear their um, debuffs. So here, all of the uh, artifact, the relics, are on the ground. Um, no players are carrying them right now. So you know where they are. It's kind of like, okay, the void one's there, storm is here, and moon is here. So all I have to do is just move to it. Um, but you still have to obey, you know, the traffic laws. You got to make sure that you're you're not really doing anything wrong. Uh, I do get one of the interrupts. So on the second star interrupt i have to make sure i'm you know tunneling that interrupt you got to make sure you're really watching for that interrupt and then uh, get the interrupt and then the next person on the list gets the next one so here this is the interesting part about this fight uh that was you know it this is where some of the clever use of game mechanics came into play um so what happens is a person needs to pick up the uh storm relic and you can see right here norav he's one of our elemental shaman uh, they use it here in order to kill all of these um, ads and before they split, you know, or before they die normally and then split into other ads or start healing or whatever. So you use that to kill them when they're under 25%. And then they purposely stand in the fear. So you can see that big fear that's, the, that's also in the other um, uh, difficulties, that big fear that covers like half of the room with a circle. Uh, they they purposely stand in that so that they can die while casting the storm thing because we don't want the storm thing to just keep casting and keep casting after the ads are already dead obviously so the the cool way to do this is you just have a shaman uh, obviously an elemental shaman um, just use that die and then onk so they just they get a free res and they can onk and then we just do it over again. We have another shaman do the next one, and then they onk. Uh, basically, it's because you know that the person is going to die. You want them to die. Um, and there's, you know, there's one class that has sort of a free death uh, shaman. You know, they have that that onk, the reincarnation uh, onk, you know, totem thing, whatever it's called. Um, but the one thing about that it does have what what is it it's like a 20 minute cooldown right or 30 minute i mean i don't know a shaman would know this obviously um but that's a long cooldown and these um these pulls that we're doing i mean you know we had a lot of pulls that where we didn't kill the boss obviously but we were using onks and we needed the onk for the next pull right after that because we're going through the entire phase every time so what do you do when you have a 20 minute cooldown or whatever it is? Uh, it's long. It's more than 15. I think it's like 20 or 30 minutes. Um, what do you do when you have like an eight minute fight or nine minutes, 10 minutes? You know, you're starting to wipe later and later, but you need the onk every time. Well, there's a dungeon called End Time. It's one of the caverns of time, sort of, you know, back in time, alternate reality, whatever bullshit. Um, so the End Time dungeon 
uh, where it has like the blue dragonflight, the bronze one, and then the red or something. And like, it's the three different areas, green, I forget. Uh, but the last boss in end time is the big hourglass guy. You might remember this uh, if you played in what, Cataclysm? Um, and uh, so th the way you use that boss is the, uh, the hourglass resets all your cooldowns. Um, so during the fight, basically back in Cataclysm, you would be doing this five man and then it's like, hey guys, let's, you know, reset our cooldown. So click the hourglass and then we can keep DPSing the boss, you know, pop our cooldowns again. So that was kind of how it was meant to be used. But it also just, I mean, it resets all your cooldowns. So all you do is you have a warlock and two other people sitting in end time. And you basically, after every pull of Unat, every pull of Mythic Unat, you, you, uh, you know, the shamans leave the group. So they will leave the raid group. They will get summoned to end time with that little group of three. They will pull the boss. They will just hit the hourglass and reset their cooldowns. And then they just hearth out, like, just all very quickly. You don't want to, you know, you don't have to fight the boss. You don't have to do anything. You just click the hourglass to reset their onk cooldown. Then they hearth out, and then they get summoned back to the raid, and then we're ready to pull. Um, so it's not, you know, it, it still takes like, you know, two or three minutes maybe to get all four shaman um, reset because it's a, because you need a warlock and two people to help summon the stone and then to help summon the shaman. Um, and then, uh, so it can, you can only do two at a time. So anyway, that was, uh, that was kind of a fun little thing that you had to do in order to have good, quick pulls. Um, so here I'm getting another interrupt here, my second interrupt. So this one, this kind of sucks right here because there's a lot going on. I absolutely must get this interrupt. So this interrupt is priority one. Like even if I have to die, I mean, I'm you know, I don't want to die, but you know, I, I have to get the interrupt. Um, we could probably survive missing an interrupt. I mean, but eh, you know, let's just not even go there. Let's just be good. Um, but second of all, I can't, I can't step into these red pools. I need to be careful about don't step in these red pools because they will heal the boss so as you can see this fear is coming and i'm not in the best spot right now i'm really not in the best spot uh so i have to i pop cheetah there and i go right between there and two of my buddies here they come with me um so there it's just you got to make sure you're going through uh so this is one of our failed attempts as i said at the beginning of this video uh so actually what happened was uh it looks like our tank let me just go back here a second uh, where is the fear? The fear is there. So our, our tank gets feared. So you see this, uh, the monk running through. So the monk, he gets feared and he goes into that one and he goes into that and that one. So he just healed the boss twice. And let me just check really quick. So the boss is at 52%. Now he's at 56. Now he's at 60. So he healed for 8%. So I guess it's about 4%, um, heal every time. So in order to kind of make up for that, we go ahead and we pop Lust here. Um, we usually save Lust for the last phase, phase three. But we knew this is definitely a wipe um, just because we won't be able to finish the boss off before we get overwhelmed. But we wanted to get into phase three and just still, you know, just keep practicing, trying to see the phase three timings, um, you know, work on our movement in phase three because it's a bit more hectic in phase three because you're, you're trying to have certain people die. You're trying to make certain things happen. Um, so again, this is a failed attempt, but I, it has everything in it. So I'll, I, I can still show everything, um, during this phase, really, you're just trying to use true shot as much as you can. You know, uh, I think this is the final one I get because he does, um, he, uh, uh, phases at 45. So 45% is the phase to phase two. Uh, so here you can kind of see there's, you know, there's definitely some traffic uh, going on. So I am, um, you can see I am the storm. I'm blue storm. So I'm kind of staying still. I don't, I shouldn't really move. I, I need the others to go in front of me because remember storm yields to both void and ocean. Um, so I'm just letting them go, but then ocean, they, you know, they're kind of waiting. So it's kind of like, okay, like just be cool guys. Don't run into each other. Just be cool. Just everyone, you know, just, it's fine. Um, and there, so I, you know, I was at four seconds left. If your debuff expires, you just blow up anyway. Um, you can turtle it. So you, uh, if you do run out of time, uh, you can use like an ice block, a turtle, whatever, uh, to get out of that. So there is a, there's an interrupt here. 
Okay, I got that interrupt. Good. <laughs> I did. I have missed a few interrupts. I think I probably missed out of about 250 pulls, uh, and we had 350. The guild had 350 pulls. I had about 250, I think. Um, out of those, I probably missed like six interrupts or so. Um, but every single one, you know, it stings. It does hurt. Uh, so here we are, the last phase. So this is, you know, phase three. It's the same thing again. It's just repeating. But there's finally one more extra mechanic. It's the same as uh, heroic and normal, I guess. Um, it's the torment. So one player gets the torment on them. And that's sort of, it's the mechanic that uh, everyone in the circle around them is, uh, gets leached. So it's, it's like the trinket that drops from the boss. So basically, uh, the person with torment is leeching um, health from everyone around them. As you can see, we still have to do resonance as well. So you really have to be really smart with your movement, making sure you're you're watching where other people are moving. You know, you're playing around with your teammates and you're not trying to play through them. Um, so here we bait that purposely right at green and then we move to red because the beams are about to come. So the two beams that are coming, those are coming. And you obviously, you don't want to hit like this one and this one right at the same time. You want to take this one first and then your debuff over here, you can see I'm taking a ticking debuff that goes off and then you get the second one. If you get two stacks, uh, it does more damage, obviously. It's just a double stack and it does a lot of damage. You got to be really careful about that. Uh, so here, you know, these are, it's getting hectic here. This is where it gets a little tough. I think, you know, we'll, we will be wiping soon, but this is, uh, you know, this is the phase three. Um, on our kill, uh, we had good people getting the torment. So one of the things is uh, the people who are getting the torment uh, debuff, you're probably going to have them die at some point because, first of all, torment is sucking, you know, health from everyone around them. So it's doing extra raid damage. So, you know, you don't you can keep them alive for a while, but like maybe right at the end of the fight, maybe like around eight to five percent, like you can just maybe just let them die so that you're not, uh, you know, taking a lot of extra raid damage. But you can see here, this is Osank, our rogue. So he is purposely picking up the storm relic. He is blasting the ads and they die. And then he is purposely going to die um, because he has torment. And so it's a good uh, reason, it's a good excuse to just have the Torment person be the sacrificial, you know, Storm Blaster uh, and then have them die because that also gets rid of one of the Torments. Uh, so you can see here he's trying to get to the edge and kill himself. So there he, he dies good. That was a, you know, that was a pretty good death. Uh, so here, the the range, we now have two Torments in range. So you build two camps. So you sort of have, you know, two ranged camps. You don't want to be all stacked on one because you're just going to be taking a lot of extra damage. Um, you only need, you know, a couple of people on each one. So there we bait again. Uh, you Again, you only want to take one stack. So my stack is off and then taking the second beam here. Uh, and remember, the boss healed twice, so he got, he gained about eight percent health. So he's he should be at about twenty one percent. And we had to use lust at a weird time. He would probably be even a little bit lower. He would probably be at about eighteen percent right now, uh, just to kind of give you an idea. Um, so with this uh, resonance, you know, we still have to do resonance even with all the shit going on. The torment people they need people next to them to leech health off of or they're just going to tick down and die pretty quickly. So during the resonance, you have two choices. I mean, you can be kind of like me. I went and I cleared my resonance really quickly. I just went and found it, cleared it quickly, and now you're going to see me. I'm standing with uh, Norav. So Norav here, one of our elemental shaman, he has torment, and we don't want to lose him yet. You know, we want to keep him alive because he might be doing the storm relic later. Uh, so we don't just want him to die, you know, with torment uh, so soon. We would rather have him, you know, have a, a meaningful, purposeful death, a glorious death against the uh, evils of Nazoth here. So what you're going to do is you're going to follow him so that he can leech off of you. Uh, here, I'm, I'm trying to cast an aim shot. This is where Mark's, marksmanship does get a little bit, you know, shittier here just because you're trying to cast aim shots. But man, you really do not have a lot of time at all to stand still. So you really have to be on top of your aim shotting. Um, so here, I just turtled. I just wanted to turtle to uh, avoid one of the stacks. But I'm not going to keep turtle up. I just need to keep doing damage. 
Um, and this is around where we're wiping, I think. I mean, one of the tanks is dead. Uh, if a tank dies, that means the ads will uh, start going on to the, and my video's loading right now. Uh, that means the ads will start going on to the tank that is still alive. So uh, it's the same as heroic and normal, whatever. One of the tanks has the ad debuff where the ads are basically fixating on one tank. So that means the other tank is on the boss. And you have to keep them separate because if the ads are next to the boss, then the boss takes, I think, 99% reduced damage. Uh, so if you lose a tank, that is definitely a wipe uh, just because the ads, any ads that end up spawning, uh, they will be on the only tank and the boss will be taking 99% reduced damage. So unless the boss has like 100k health left or something, uh, you're not going to make it. Um, so here we're at 24. Remember, you know, he healed for eight. So what is this? This is about 16, maybe 14, 13 if we had lost at the right time. Uh, so this is a tough little spot. I wasn't in really the best spot here. I need to run all the way over there. Um, and I think I remember what happened here. I think I'm the one that baited uh, terribly. Is this where it drops it right on me? Or no, I think it drops it over there. So this is really bad. I mean, I already knew it was a wipe. Uh, so it's whatever. But this is a terrible spot to be in because the the bait is about to come out. And if I'm baiting right here, this is cutting like a huge alleyway of people uh, needing to move from the range stack over to the um, the lightning crown. So this is like a terrible place to be right now. But I just I wanted to get my true shot off my aim shots. So, you know, whatever. Um, but we all knew it was a wipe and I'm double tapping. Um, yeah, I mean, the boss would have been maybe at like 14% here, maybe even 10%, we could argue. Uh, so, you know, that's a, that's a pretty good pull. Um, everyone that went that way, that's fine. As long as you're getting through, like not taking two stacks and you're getting to the right spot. Uh, so here is unstable resonance and I'm lucky I have a void stone right there. So I'm going to go back and I should be helping the, um, the guy running, but I mean, it's starting to break down a little bit. Um. You know, we, I don't think we were playing too fully here just because we knew it was a wipe, but we wanted to get in far, as far into phase three as we could. Um, definitely one of our best pulls other than the kill pull. But I think right around here, the boss would have been at probably about 5%. So we were going in for the kill. So here on the kill, uh, I remember I, at one point, I just peeled away from the group because I knew a couple of things were going to start happening. I am second on threat uh, after the tanks. So if one tank dies and the other tank dies, then I'll be the next one. So I need to be like kind of away from the group, first of all. Um, and let's see, is this where I... No, I didn't bait poorly here either. I'm trying to remember. One of the attempts I baited poorly, but I don't think you're going to be able to see it. So maybe it didn't actually happen. Um, obviously here we have like six ads. So a big part of phase three is finishing those ads is killing the ads during phase three so you you have to make sure you're figuring out you know you you want to do damage to the ads but not too much damage but you also you want to kill them at the right time so you want to be using the storm relic to kill them when they're under 25 percent. so that's another thing in phase three that's pretty tough you have to kind of time uh when you are doing that and on heroic difficulty you can basically ignore that because you can just damage the boss through that uh, and you don't even have to kill any of the uh ads really you can just ignore them but on mythic you definitely have to uh and you can see here on the damage meter i mean i was when we were still going here i was third on boss damage um so marksmanship is you know marksmanship can be pretty decent uh for doing uh obviously execute you know the big execute damage with careful aim and like true shots um, so the execute was really important with marksmanship. That's definitely a good execute spec, uh, except that that whole time, you, that whole time I was running, let's see, how long was this? So here my, I'm almost at two sh charges of aim shot and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. That was basically 10 seconds of being at two charges of aim shot. So it's just one of those fights. It's one of those fights where you're just, you can't, you can't stop to cast aim shot because you're going to be out of position for baiting. You're going to be doing the wrong thing. Uh, there are a most, almost every other single fight in this entire expansion. 
you've been able to kind of, you know, you can, okay, I can finish the same shot. It's not too big of a deal. It's not a wipe. But, you know, maybe I should be doing this. But, you know, I can finish it. But on this fight, you can't you can't even stop to cast aim shot. You just have to keep running. Um, and, of course, all the other classes, are it's the same. They can't be stopping to cast Chaos Bolt or, you know, Unstable Affliction, whatever. They can't be stopping to cast shit. Uh, Lava Burst, I don't know. Um, you just have to keep moving. So, you know, Beast Mastery obviously could, is also a good choice here. I mean, just for the obviousness that you... Uh, it also has some decent execute and it has free movement. Um, and I mean, I just chose to do marksmanship. I really like marksmanship, obviously, as you can tell by this YouTube channel. Um, but so I wanted to give it a try. And, you know, Beast Mastery definitely works really well here as well. Uh, you have to be a, a better marksmanship player in order for it to be, you know, as good <laughs> as uh, Beast Mastery here. So anyway, so that's Unat. Um uh, you know, I'm sad I didn't get to post the actual kill video. One of my buddies, I'm sure they will have it. Uh, the Union, um, you know, the Union uh, Unak kill. But, uh, you know, it was actually a fun boss. I mean, it's kind of weird. These bosses, you kind of hate them when you're about halfway through progression where you've kind of learned everything, but people are still fucking little, you know, simple things up or you're just kind of like, oh, you know, we could have avoided doing that. Um, but right near the end of progression, when you know that it's about to be a kill, that's when you're like, oh yeah, this boss is fun. Like, you know, I can't wait to kill him and then you kill him and it's like, yes. So, uh, anyway, I will be posting obviously the heroic and mythic bosses from eternal palace. Uh, I'll try to do some, some chat about, um, the essences. I mean, on this fight, I'm using the, uh, the crucible of flame I don't really like it. I know it's it's decent for Hunter, um, but I, mean, I don't know. I, I like some of the other ones I was using, but they, you, you know, you can't unlock all of them right now. Um, and, you know, uh, we'll see how the Sims go and stuff like that and how they synergize maybe with some trinkets or some Azerite traits. Um, but, you know, Crucible of Flame was pretty good here. So, yeah, this is the one and only time we're going to kill this boss, uh, and it was quite an adventure. And uh, But, yeah, thanks to you, uh, thanks to you guys for watching. Uh, this is the end of 8.1.5. We are now into 8.2. Uh, so we're, we're going to be rolling hard in some Nashatar, some Mechagon, and some Eternal Palace. And I will see you guys later.